Pacific Division. Probably one of the the more exciting ones. We got what four, or five three teams? heavyweights. Three heavyweights. What's the three? Clippers, Lakers, Warriors. Oh yeah, I guess so. Warriors are still a heavyweight. You're right. You're right. You're right. But we got two like <laughs> these are the, the title biggest scene, candidate, yeah. like real title candidates, and then one that we know is still gonna be good, but we don't know if they're they're not on that level of the right. other teams in LA. But California in general just got good basketball. Kind of envious of that. But uh, we may start. Should we start off with the trivia? Let's get it. So the first question comes from <clears throat> Mantis. We all know that Derrick Rose had an iconic 50-point game. But what was his career high before the 50-point game? Was it 39, 41, 42, or 47 points in a single game? 41. 41 for Derrick? Said that very confidently, Derek. I like. I like. I'm the pretty confidence. sure it was that game where he hit the game winner against the Lakers. Okay, 42 for Mike. Yeah. And P. 42. It is 42. Ah, uh, you had that confidence. I like the confidence. It was just a little bit off. Question number two comes from Caesar Cruz. Which was the last pair of teammates to finish first and second in scoring? Was Mantis it Mantis and Caesar Cruz? What up? Um, was it Alex English and Kiki Vandeweghe? Was it MJ and Scottie Pippen? What is Kareem and Clyde Drexler? Or was it Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant? It's one and two in scoring? In scoring oh. for a single season. Yes, one and two. First and second, which is an amazing thing. Mm-hmm. It's only, I think it only happened once in the current era. Like in the 60s and 50s, we don't count those. I'm sorry. I'm sorry anybody that was playing in the 60s is watching this episode. But Westbrook, Durant. Westbrook, Durant, Elijah Juan Drexler, oh. Jordan oh. Pippen, Alex Vandeweghe. I'm gonna go English with Val- uh, I'm gonna go with the, I'm going with Elijah Wan and Clyde Drexler. Okay, and P. You said you went what? Jordan and Pimpin. <laughs> Give me Alex English and Kiki Vandeweghe. It is Alex English and Kiki Vandeweghe in '83, '84, something like that. Number one and number two. I was looking at that season, and there's a bunch of names in the top ten that I don't even recognize. That was just like leading the league in scoring. So I guess that season didn't matter too much. Then, lastly, I, of this don't, episode, don't, don't discredit Alex English. Alex Inglis is cool, and Kiki Vandeweghe be giving people those fines, and I mess with that. Alan Chan, <laughs> which NBA player has the highest win percentage in the history of the league? Win percentage is calculated by total wins divided by the total number of games played. All right? Mm-hmm. Is it A, Draymond Green? Is it B, uh, Michael Jordan? Is it C, Timmy Duncan? Or is it D, Kawhi Leonard? Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. Tim Duncan. Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. Kawhi Leonard has won 75.37% yeah. of his games. Ain't that crazy? They said that so many times during like yeah. the playoffs they last year. They said on 2K too. At least last year they did. And yeah. um, Kawhi Leonard. And then second was Magic Johnson. I didn't even know why mm-hmm. Magic Johnson wasn't an option here because he's pretty close right, at yeah, yeah. Um, 73.95%. Yeah. And yeah. then Larry Bird was 73.58. And then Draymond. So it's pretty close. Mm-hmm. But Kawhi's got that. And who knows, it may be even higher at the end of this season because the Clippers are great. Y'all like that transition? I do. So let's talk about the Clippers, man. Um, big offseason for them. Like one of the most crazy things happened. I remember it was 1 o'clock in the morning, something like that this mm-hmm. time, when we heard about Kawhi Leonard signing. And we was like, oh, snap, we finally know. Yeah. And then three minutes later, we found out that Paul George is coming with him. Mm-hmm. I got out of bed, went to my workroom, and recorded a video right there about it because I was in disbelief. That's why the NBA is such a great league because something like this that you could not predict happens. I was asleep when it happened, but I woke up at like three and I remember looking at it and I was just in disbelief uh-huh. that Paul George was going to because he literally just signed his his extension to. And I was like, wow, they're going to be dangerous because they still got most of their core from last year too. They have all of it. Yeah. And then so added- I got Nari. Y'all know the only guy that's yeah. Tobias, Shea. Here, Tobias here, Shea's not there no more. But, I mean, that team was in the playoff hunt for most of the season last year. And then it got to the point where the trade deadline, they traded their best player, Tobias Harris. But they got they, better. Yeah. So, was Tobias Harris really their best player? If you trade your best player and you get better? Mm, yeah, mm-hmm. I would say he's still the okay. best player. Him and Lou Will. Definitely. Yeah, Lou Will's definitely up there. So, they are projected to win 48 games, mm-hmm. which seems a bit low. Um, I think they take it into account that right. low management. But Kawhi said yeah, this year. They just said Kawhi's low management won't be as strict as last year. Which is which is good to hear. I hope so. Um I don't want to. I would hate to go to like a Clippers then, game and not I see him play. Paul exactly. George will be there at the start of the season. No, he yeah, won't. it is yeah. rumored that he will not be there for the yeah, first month so. of the season. 
because he had that shoulder mm-hmm. injury. But he was just at the that court. Y'all saw that clip from yeah, House of Highlights? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he was hooping. And then he's been in the gym. So who knows? Um, it's just speculation about him not being ready for the beginning of the season. But regardless, even if he missed, what, two or three weeks, that team is still good enough to be, you know, they're looking yeah. at what Pat Bev, Landry Shamit. Then we have Paul George, if he was healthy, um, Kawhi, and, and then Zubak. Mm-hmm. That start five is crazy. Then off the metric, you got Lou Will and Montreal Hero. Yeah. Sixth and seventh man. Um, yeah, it was a good bang. I liked it. Um, it was exciting, like y'all just said. Uh, we kept looking at the Kawhi Leonard going to the Clippers alone and seeing, thinking about how good they could be with just him, mm-hmm. um, let alone adding Paul George. Who was MVP um, candidate last year. And so. I'm glad you said that how exciting this made basketball because I got this pulled up in front of me about the NBA passing the changes to enforce stricter measures to free agency tampering rules. Yep. Mm-hmm. Where now the penalty is going up from $6 million to $10 million. Uh, they'll do random audits where they can take a players and agents and <laughs> uh, some front office guys phones. Uh, they they mentioned um, doing things about guys contacting another guy to get traded, mm-hmm. like the Kawhi. They basically yeah. did it because of the Kawhi and Paul George right. situation. So because of these new rules being um, applied, mm-hmm. we that may have been our last big bang. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because at midnight. And realistically, there's no way players should already have contracts signed because that means they were talking before the beginning of the, mm-hmm. uh, the uh, free agency period. So we won't get like how some people stay up all night to live stream the, the free agency period. It's not going to happen that way anymore. You know, we're not going to see Timothy Mozgov get signed at 1201 or 601 now that they changed the time um, that people can <laughs> yeah, sign. It says the NBA also proposed a ban of players communicating one another to request a trade from their current team. A same reaction to when Kawhi Leonard approached Paul George in July to get him to the Los Angeles Clippers. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. And then Adam Silver said, I think it's pointless at the end of the day to have rules that we can't enforce. It hurts the perception of integrity around the league if people say, well, you have that rule and it's obvious that teams aren't fully complying, so why do we even have it? I think the sense in the room was we should revisit those rules. Tampering reached a fever pitch during the 2019 free agency period with nearly every major deal seemingly agreed upon before or quickly after the so-called <laughs> legal tampering period began June 30th. Some deals like Kemba Walker's packed with the Boston Celtics and Kyrie Irving's with the Brooklyn Nets were reported well before teams were even supposed to be able to contact those players. There's a big difference between having conversations about how a team wants to build its roster, whether it prioritize a free agency and whether they have interest in your player, or having a deal done on June 20th. An agent told uh, Woj, both sides are in the information gathering business. That's the nature of the job. Um, and apparently, Woj said some agent or uh, a front office, yeah, front office guy told him that He'll 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 play by the rules until he finds out other people aren't. Then he'll just go back to nine. Mm-hmm. Which is what he did <laughs> yeah. with the NBA draft, right? Where he's like, uh, they're thinking about drafting this guy <laughs> or something like that. Um, but that that's very interesting that that's happening this offseason. So like the teams like the the Clippers or people that hit big in free agency, they lucked out. Because yep. next year's free agency class is kind of trash. Yep. So they lucked out that this rule wasn't for this year because who knows how Brooklyn would have looked if they couldn't talk to Kyrie Irving before, you yeah. know, the, this thing started. So, yeah, they definitely, <laughs> definitely lucked out there. But this Clippers team is super going to be super exciting. They're going to mm-hmm. be a, a defensive, gritty team. Uh, Pat Bev saying don't dribble on him. Landry <laughs> Shaman's one of the best shooters mm-hmm. in the league last year, his rookie year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Montrez Harrell was a dog off the bench, and we know what Lou Will can do too. So I'm super excited for this team, but we got to look at positives and negatives. One of the big negatives for them is that they traded pretty much the entire future for uh, two years of Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. Mm-hmm. So if they strike out in those two years as far as championship goes, both of those players can walk and go try to pursue it somewhere else. Yeah. Right. But I think it's a worthy... Um, thing to try because yeah. the Clippers have been one of those teams that were the laughing stock of the league when they first came in. Then you have the whole Sterling thing that happened that made it even even worse. And they were always LA's little brother. And it might still always be L- Lakers town. It pro- yes, it will probably always mm-hmm. still be Lakers town. But the Clippers can now fight and potentially win a championship. Yeah, and Doc Rivers had like a, a little interview um, where he was talking about the process and he was talking about how Kawhi had told them the team wasn't good enough. Um, and they needed to get Paul George and do this and that. And then it's a quote right here <clears throat> that he said to Steve Ballmer, because apparently Steve Ballmer kept saying six picks for Paul George is a lot. And uh, Doc Rivers said, you keep saying six picks for Paul George is insane, but it's six picks for Paul and Kawhi. Exactly, because so, Kawhi said he wasn't coming yeah. without another star. He says he looks at it as three for each. Yeah, and yeah. Anybody would do that. So I agree with you. I think that this is a good risk. 
Um, because I think even if they don't get the championship to the new takes two years, I think they'll be awfully close or something crazy yeah. happens. I'm, I'm sure Kawhi back. would stay just because it's that LA town. Unless Paul he's, George is from LA. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, think don't, I don't. Think, both LA natives. I think they yeah. they want to just stay in in LA and hoop. Yeah. I think the only way that both of them leave is like something drastic yeah, happens. Yeah, they like, like the team just shit the bed or yeah, something. They're not even making conference finals. They get into it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but uh, but it seemed like both of those guys will be at a jail. Well, I feel like neither yeah. one of their personalities are like too strong. And I think Kawhi is pretty like laid back and quiet. I don't think. Oh yeah. I don't think anything's gonna like really pop off with them too. Right. Yeah, and then I mean, when you look at contract wise, I mean, they're the top two, obviously. But then I, I, after that. I mean, you look at Lou Will, he's probably the third best player on the team. Mm-hmm. He's the fifth highest paid. Um, Mo Hawkins is the one making 11. Patrick Bev is making 12. He's got mm-hmm. his money. Uh, Zubak is making six. He'll probably be due for, or was it already due? Zubak? He, yeah, it wasn't. They picked he was a up rookie. His restricted. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then Montrez Harrell will probably have to get paid. But other than that, I mean, they, they, got, a, they got something nice going. Uh, Landry Shaman is still in his rookie deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the rookies that they brought in. They didn't bring in anybody that's going to win rookie of the year, obviously. But when you look at Terrence Mann and you look at uh, Cap and Jelly from Florida State, though, those are two defensive guys as well. You got a defensive guy on the wing and Terrence Mann and. Captain Jelly is a big man who can shoot threes and protect the rim. And That's that the first goes. time I've ever heard his name pronounced. Cool, Captain Jelly. Captain Jelly. Okay. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> um, but I, I like that, and that's the yeah. same thing with Landry Shamit. Like Landry Shamit wasn't a rookie of the year. Oh my gosh! But he fit what they were trying to do, and mm-hmm. he fit well with their best players. And I think these are the same type of guys that'll come in, and like I said, may not have these crazy rookie numbers, but for their team. There'll be guys that can come in and, and, and mesh well. Shout out to the Clippers. I mean, shout out to the 76ers for making this possible for the Clippers mm-hmm. with the Landry Shaman <laughs> trade. For real. <laughs> the Landry Shaman trade, they got the picks when they sent Tobias Harris, and those picks turned into Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and Landry Shaman, who shot, let me see what his three point percentage was 42% from three in the regular season. And yeah, Jerry West get it done. I'm, yeah, he does. He get it done. I'm, excited, I'm excited for Landry Shaman because we get to see him on an even bigger stage. Mm-hmm. And I think as long as he continues to. to uh, Put up the numbers like that. When his contract is up, he's gonna want his money. And and the team's gonna want him. He's might gonna go elsewhere, and I think we'll see. We'll see something. We'll see something good for him because I don't think we're gonna see his full capabilities yet. If we do, then this team will be even more dangerous. But I, I just, from what I know and seen of him in college, with how he shot the ball in, in, in the NBA. He could, you know, if he gets the opportunity, he can he can take his game to another level. I always get um, pretty jealous about stuff like this. Like he was drafted twenty sixth overall, and he looks he has potential to be very very good. At least always a valuable player because of his yeah, shooting. Yeah, because of his shooting ability. The Bulls, like as a fan, mm-hmm. we often have like t- double picks, right? Like last year we had double picks and we drafted goddamn Hutchison. But then you draft but Hutchison may have been a good player. With he might be mm-hmm. six his team. This is just a different thing. When you're playing with Ben Simmons, Joel and B, like Shaman was at the early part of his career, it's easy to come in and just knock down th- shots and you learn it from JJ Reddick. But I think you go he, to the he Bulls, could probably do this anywhere though. You go to the Bulls, I don't know. Come off screens and hit threes. I don't know. Because it's more than coming off screens. When you have Ben Simmons creating for you, making the defense collapse, you have Joel Embiid in the paint who's getting double teamed. So much focus is on them. Mm-hmm. It just it just it makes you, to, yeah, yeah, it makes it and easier for you. And he's back in a similar situation where he got two superstars right next to him to take a lot of that. I don't think by, no. the time that you, by the time he did that with the Sixers, he has the most important part of an NBA player's career, which is the confidence part. Once you get the confidence, oh, that I, I can do this shit. I can score. I can. Mm-hmm. I, I'm playing at this level and I'm doing good. Once you get that, it's game over. Now, Landry Shaman could probably go to the Bulls and do it now. But fresh out of college, right day one in the NBA with the Bulls, I don't. I don't know if he would have that same type of level of play just because it's hard to get that confidence. It, it take it, confidence will take a player's career from here to here. Really, it's Steph Curry. Steph Curry could always shoot the ball. He was shooting the ball lights out of Davidson. But when he got that confidence in the NBA, he started shooting from 45 feet. Started shooting from damn near half court. He wasn't ever doing that type of shit like that in Davidson or in his first couple of years. But once he got that confidence, game over. Same thing with Harden. Harden could always hoop. He was the third overall pick. He's a, he's a dog, six man a year. But now he's a step back in, <laughs> euroing, <laughs> one foot, mm-hmm. one foot in. Like confidence is a dangerous thing to have, you know, in anything, but let alone basketball. Yeah. You, you play with that confidence and you don't give a damn and you're just out there hooping freely, it's, 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 it's dangerous. Um, but yeah, I, I like the same. They yeah, added a mirror. I think their small ball shoot. lineup is gonna be killing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For yeah. Montrezl Hill at that, that that five, and you can have Paul George and Kawhi at the 
at the four spots. You can kind of pick your poison of who you want to put out. You can put Lamar Shaman and Lou Will. You can put Patrick Beverly and, and like Lou Will. You can, yeah. too. you kind of mix Green it up. Played real good with the, against the Warriors yeah. last night. I mean, last night. I'm, I'm I, I wish. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> uh, last playoffs. Um, and yeah, they got the good coach for mm-hmm. this, Doc Rivers. He's mm-hmm. used to having um, whatever you want. I don't know if you call this a, this, but a big two. But he, he's had experience in coaching. I'm very curious to what, how they close out games. Yeah. Because they have so many options. You want Lou Will out there, obviously, but Lou mm-hmm. Will is a kind of ISO heavy, give me the ball, let me get you a bucket mm-hmm. type guy. And you want that alongside Kawhi and Paul George. Are you making Lou Will become a spot of shooter? Like, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's odd. They have like three legitimate guys that used to close for their team. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And we're going to have to see how they balance that. Is it is this Paul George this night? Is this I feel like it's going to be like the hot hand type of night. Or they might do it like Dame and CJ do, whoever called it, like, hey, let me get the ball. Then it's. <laughs> That's that's kind of funny. Yeah, they just call. Because you would think some people are the type to be like, they always be yeah. like, give me the ball. <laughs> yeah. Give me the ball. But you got to trust your teammates, you know? You got to trust your teammates. So I got a question, mm-hmm. but we'll save that for after we talk about the Lakers because it's between those two teams. Um, let's hide the Lakers for later in the show, though, so we can get people to keep let's watching. Talk about, let's talk about um, the Suns. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the Suns. They won 19 games okay. last season. This year, they are projected to jump up. To 36 wins. That's a that's an amazing okay, jump. That is an amazing stop, jump. Stop. They won how many last year? 19. 19. They're projected to win what? 36. So when you look at this team mm-hmm. on paper. Do I see 36 wins? No. Okay. But I do see I hope I, I do see, I see jump though. Yeah, I do see improvement. Okay. I think no, they, I think we all see a jump, but to from nineteen and thirty six. Yeah, it's a big jump for them. Is that that's 17, games. Yeah. 17 games. That's a big jump. I can see a ten game. If you don't if cause I was just asking because everybody always saying they don't see that from the Knicks. Mm-hmm. But I you know, from what we added to what they added is ugh. I they they added players that they needed. Yeah, like Sarge. They add, they needed a stretch that can shoot the ball. They yep. added Sarge. They needed a point guard that can distribute the ball. They added Ricky Rubio. Now yeah. they the best at those things. No, but Ricky Rubio has been a very good player, a quality player in this mm-hmm. NBA for for multiple years. And yeah, Dario Sarge he, he has been too. Around for a reason. Well, the reason is that he's just not it to win it all. Like for the Utah Jazz, they want to go all in. Ricky Rubio not your starting point guard if you want to win a championship. Right. But for a team like the Suns that's trying to go step by step, I think Ricky Rubio is right. a pretty. And good I think pickup. he he helps them be competitive. I think this is a it quality starting lineup. Ricky Rubio we getting man because if we get it, that Ricky if, Rubio if that's anything, knocking down shots, it's right. Ricky Rubio you want. But if he's not, then he's just there. Especially when you have guys like Devin Booker and Donovan mm-hmm. Mitchell as his counterparts. That's yeah. why the. Dipped on and won him in Minnesota because well, like we know what he can do. His role for the most part should just be distributing the ball. That team yeah. has weapons. They play that, defense, right? And that team has weapons things. that that can put the ball in the basket. And him with a DeAndre Aiden in a pick and roll could be something. I'm, he's Sarich taking can, that full playmaking right, responsibility. Sar- out of Sarich can stretch the floor with him. Mikael Bridges is long and athletic, and he he, he defends like crazy. Right. So the point we're getting in the league is that those guys that you're talking about can, mm-hmm. can play McGinn score, so you don't have to bring in Rubio if you don't need to. Mm-hmm. If he's not going to help the offensive flow or help that player, like that's the thought is that yeah, right. he's going to come in and help. You. That playmaker role was always put on Devin Booker, though. Right, but right. He, so this, but it, doesn't, was, it doesn't have to be at this point. Right, Devin Booker's a good playmaker, but he's not a great playmaker. A player like Ricky Rubio is a great playmaker. So I, I think they're just divvying up the playmaking aspects of, mm-hmm. of basketball. No, like, but I understand that. But what I'm saying is, if he why take that away if he's hurting him in an offensive way? Mm-hmm. Like, because what I mean by that is his shooting ability, right? His best year was the year before. Like, not last year, but the year before. When he came with he, the tattoos and the man bun. And then he shot 35% from three mm-hmm. on damn near. Uh, and then what did he shoot last year? He only shot 31. Um, but did his, att- his attempt, or his attempts went up by just a little bit. Damn near the same. But what I'm saying is, if Devin Burker, yeah, he's not. Just crazy playmaker, but he had seven assists last year on a right. team that wasn't as good as I think it's going to be this year. But I think part of that has to do with his high usage rate too. You know what I'm saying? Because so, he has the ball so much, you, you're going to have to play make. Because like you said, he's bring, he's bringing drawing a double team, mm-hmm. so he's going to have to pass that ball. Yeah, and that's what. It, but the, I'm saying that's where the game is going. When you look at guys like him. Guys like Harden. They even gave the Bulls had some opportunity when Zach Levine was doing it. Right. If you if you, if that's the way that the game is going. There's no more tradition. There's not a lot of teams that have a traditional I don't think point guard hurt. that's like, you go right there. You're right. I think there's still, still value on having him on that court. Exactly. Just because I think, so I think he, he's paper, still a veteran. Yeah, on paper it might yeah. be, but I'm saying. I mean, there's stuff he could do on the court that, that doesn't show up on a play. But I think he's, he's still a veteran guard in this league. And for a, a youthful team like that Phoenix Suns, there's time where you could put the ball in his hands and just let that team slow down and gather itself back. 
I think Ricky, Ricky Rubin is going to help this team. I, I hope so. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he's going to hurt the team. But I'm saying if your team, like this team isn't winning, trying to win a championship or... or they want to make even, they want to make the playoffs. You don't even right. know if they're going to make the playoffs. I doubt they will. Uh, yeah. So, and they gave him what sixteen million for three years. Mm-hmm. I hope they I did. thought I they did. Be, I thought they did. I hope they can have personally. a good start. This I I have no. I don't think they make the playoffs at all. But if they can start off good and they can well, they, convince us that for wasn't a little their bit. contract. Yeah, that was they from just the got heat. it back yeah, for a pick. But they have it on their roster for a pick though. Isn't this the last year of it though? Yes. He's but expired. even if it's for a pick, that's what I'm saying. You're you're just you're rebuilding. You're going in a certain direction, mm-hmm. and Devin Booker just showed you that he can give you that. He can give you it. So but I would rather put another complimentary player mm-hmm. next to him on a that perimeter. That's just me. For example, like who? Or what? What do you think is like the prime that's what I was say, player for? What a if he was the best co-star? player he can get? Not that could well, they tried to get D'Angelo Russell. That would have been a prime example yes, of a great but, co-star to have with him. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That, that's perfect. That's perfect. But you can't always go. You can't. Him. You can. So like, you got to go I, get. I would have ran. I would have ran even if. Well, I'll take this roster without Ricky Rubio. And then I would run a Devin Booker, um, Mikael Bridges, Kelly Oubre, Sarik, and Aiden. We're, we're, we're running like that. Right. And if and if that's shit in our face, then we're going to let Ty Jerome get some minutes. <laughs> we're going to let Javon Carter get some minutes. Uh, Ali Okobo, uh, Okobo that we drafted second for our first pick second round last year is going to get some tick. That's what we're doing instead mm-hmm. of paying $16 million to Ricky right. Rubio to be what? To, uh, to take but I'm just saying, ha- off of him? I think that just makes him a little bit more competitive with Ricky Rubio, Ricky Rubio just because he he is a starting quality that, point but guard. But that little league. bit of competitiveness yeah. is what? I mean, wins. what if that, what what? If, if it does create a five to 10 win jump and then you de- do see more progress in that team, I mean, I think it'd be worth it. Like you yeah, said, there, Ricky Rubio's not winning a championship. There's bro. value in just yeah. getting better, especially yeah. with a guy like Devin Booker who's mm-hmm. never I been think, over 25 wins. I think they would get better. Regardless, I don't mm-hmm. think Ricky Ru- we I don't think we look at this team and say, "Oh shit," because they have Ricky. No, Rubio, but he definitely he just but helps. But when though. you think about mm-hmm. the second year in DeAndre Aiden, mm-hmm. you think about how they got the uh, Sarek. You think about how they added a guy like Frank Kaminsky, another big that can shoot. And you think about even even though you know they didn't do it the right way, they did draft some good guys. Cameron Johnson is solid. He just shouldn't win it. Oh, eleven. Eleven. Ty right. Jerome <laughs> could potentially have some some go in the league. Yeah. Javon, we know what he can do defensively. Defensively. Uh, yeah. And then they brought in Air Baines. They brought in solid people. They kept on um, Kelly Oubre, who I mm-hmm. like a lot, who I so, think fit there. Right. So DeAndre Aiden had a good rookie season. And that's without anybody getting him the ball. Like, out of all the rookies that we were talking about having good seasons, he had, like, the least amount of touches. He didn't have a player that can get him the ball when he needed it to get to. Devin Booker is a good playmaker. He's not a great playmaker. He missed on a lot of pick and roll. There's an entire video about thinking basketball because there's a narrative about Devin Booker that he's a, a good stats, bad team guy. And this guy broke it down to like, hey, that's not true. But one thing that Devin Booker does miss on is the pick and roll with DeAndre Aiden. A guy that excels at pick and roll with his big man is Ricky Rubio. Hmm. So DeAndre Aiden put up like 14 and 10 or something like that with not having a point guard that can right. give him the ball when he's rolling. And what did he do? Great college, he rolled to the basket. So now he has a point dark guard that excels at that. So you can expect DeAndre Aiden to get a lot better. Yeah. You're gonna expect Devin Booker to be better because he doesn't but have now, to. But now, what do we do in a few years where Ricky Rubio is not on his team anymore? I mean, at that point, we hope that DeAndre Aiden is more of a, because a that's independent the case, player. That's their first year together. Yeah. I don't expect them to have everything down packed in a first year together. And that was the first year where Devin Booker was their mm-hmm. primary playmaker. Right. Really. So in the second year, that's what we're working. That's what we're working on. That's what mm-hmm. we're trying to see them get that together. I'm not. Br- I'm not paying sixteen million dollars a year for me to bring in rookie Rubio right. and help him with his I mean, but, uh, game. So from what I don't even know if the contract matters because they're not a team that's going to spend that money on a very I'm good all, player. I'm, I'm always for having money because then you can eat up a, a Tyler Johnson. When you have that money available, you can eat up a Tyler Johnson contract for a first round. But you just said that that was bad like three minutes ago. No, I just said that I'm just saying they paying him nineteen million dollars. That's on the for, when I said four pick. He's like, but it's still. The, the the thing is, I, I understand it is for a pick, but we all know that for when you get a pick back, that's good. But I'm just saying, still, not, the, when you look at the salaries, the top four, the top three players are who Devin. Well, I can't Devin Booker and Tyler Johnson and, and Ricky Rubio. Rubio. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I don't I don't look at that and be like, oh that ain't that's that's crazy to me. I, I don't think that your top three players being paid should be Devin Booker, Tyler Johnson, and Ricky Rubio. But good point. They have if no options. Get, they, yeah, they don't have pick, many cool. options. Mm-hmm. So why not keep the money open to to go get picks? I think or they, shit like that. Or I, right. not that, not I'm, that I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up their money. salary, but I think they look at the rest of them contracts. They don't really have yeah. much on the books. They resign Kelly Oubre, but mm-hmm. other than that, they can probably still take a bad contract yeah, if they needed to. Have to get paid in a couple of years, right? One hundred percent. 
And then, yeah, that's probably. But Tyler Johnson's off the book by that time. Yeah. And then Rubio will be on the last year of his deal. Mm-hmm. And you could probably ship him. And then Aaron Baines is, um, is a free agent this season, too. Mm-hmm. And I think Frank Kaminsky signed for one plus one. So they left their options open and if they did want to chew a contract. Yeah. And then they, should, they, the way they draft the Cameron Johnson, they're going to have to pay him as well, um, <laughs> which is crazy. Or, or I think Dario Sarr got to get paid, too. He only making mm-hmm. $3 million a year. I yep. think the roster that they have this year could definitely just show a lot of progression I, I think it for would what too, this team I is. think even without Ricky Rubio, it mm-hmm. would have showed progression. When right. you have a number one overall pick like DeAndre Aiden, mm-hmm. who had a solid rookie year, in his first year, you got to give him another – like, he's going to be better. Right. He's going to be better. He's just going to be better. I mm-hmm. look at – we all that, – that's not always the way it goes, but we all know DeAndre You can Aiden. definitely project yeah. him to be better. 100%. Yes. But why not get a player that can help him that's get to that like, get better? And I think I mean, that's what we're And that can actually like him get better. To how the me, league is okay going. if that guy was like Kobe White. If you had drafted a guard and you got him that's going to be right. there, Ricky Rubio – what if Ricky Rubio doesn't get him better? I mean, he took a chance. It's a, yeah. it's a game about chances. I mean, this dude We've is, seen is things like that for, happen all the time. Yeah, this dude is known for just making his players better around him with his passing ability. And we've and seen think, teams like have the veteran wing. Yeah, and I'm not as their like and w- with their youthful move, right. the veteran wing. Why not? It's okay about, to have a veteran point you guard. You were talking about yeah. earlier how you mean veteran wing like who? Like how the Bulls have like Otto Porter. He's like 26, but he's not. And then like the uh, Kings have Harrison Barnes. He comes in, he plays his role oh, right, but he's. Though. Like they have the veteran, the wings that have been in the league for a minute, they might not fit their timeline, but they're quality players that fit that team. And I think Rubio is like a quality player. That right, because he don't team. fit the Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton timeline, right. but he's good now to help them progress as, as players. Right. Yeah, but and you got to pay to and you got to pay to get those that's players because wings are so versatile. You can put Harrison Barnes mm-hmm. at three or four. The, the guard position is so loaded in the NBA right now that it's like everybody's damn near elite. It's only a couple teams that doesn't have an elite point guard. I mean, you think about Steph Curry. Damian Lillard, Kyrie Irving. I could go on. That's probably one of the most – when we did that that point guard list, like that was one of the hardest ones to do. That and probably what? The, the other ones wasn't that hard. It was just harder whose goal was one, two, and three. Right. But yeah. that was just a long-ass list of – I didn't even name Ben Simmons, Kemba Walker. Like that. that's just the way it is. But I guess I'm, fi- I'm fine with it, but I just hope it works. Yeah, I think I, it would. I just think that this team would have been better regardless. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't look at this because you're talking about just having. You don't need a really a, a point guard when you say you have Devin Booker and you have a whole bunch of wings that can just initiate the offense to start off with. But I, I think just Ricky Rubio, Ricky Rubio makes everybody better, and I can just take that as a coach, especially and, with a team full of young players. And if anything, he can help just teach them. And yeah. the big question mark with the Suns last year was their point guard position. Yeah, mm-hmm. and. Essentially, they went out and they upgraded it because last year they had Definitely a bunch of no names. They, they had a bunch Anthony, of no names yeah, at that PG Milton spot. And, so and, we were talking about Devin Booker's low management. I mean, his low that he was taking on was because he didn't have a point guard. And as you know, but nobody, I, I didn't, I had no problem with what he was taking on. I don't, I didn't, mm-hmm. nobody, I've never seen anybody say Devin Booker was doing too much or they would drive him into the ground. I just think that the talent level on the team wasn't mm-hmm. there, and I don't think Ricky Rubio answers that question to me personally. If we're a team and we're going into a rebuild or, or not even that rebuild because they have a sound, mm-hmm. solid foundation. Let's keep going in there that, with guys that are going to be around right. here. That's why I liked when they went out and, and kept um, uh, what is his name? I keep forget Kelly Oubre. Mm-hmm. And I like that they brought in Dario Sarg. Like these guys aren't rookies, but they're young enough to just come in and fit with them and be a part of the long term goal. Because mm-hmm. that's the whole point. If you suck this long for so long. Go get, go try to go get a D'Angelo Russell. They so tried. He was young right. enough. Did they try? Yeah, yeah. but they had to set. They had to settle on what they got because they had to do a sign and trade with um with Brooklyn, with Brooklyn and they just I, didn't have anything to trade away. That would have been like perfect. Those type of guys was like we. I don't. I know damn well Ricky Rubio is not about to be a part of this shit for the long term. But hopefully it works mm-hmm. out for them. Well, I mean, it could somehow in the future it could work out. If you if you look at it in the same way they the Utah Never Jazz team. kind of yeah. utilized Ricky Rubio with yeah, that team. The Utah team. Jazz team was way better. Yeah, and they were than what this team will be with him. Yeah, yeah, but he did. I mean, Donovan Mitchell. I feel like they were decent backcourt mates. They're not going to be Mike Conley and Donovan Mitchell, but I think Ricky Rubio did help him out a little bit. We got to take our first break. So we're going to transition to another very young team, but one that actually surprised a bunch of people last year, mm-hmm. and that is the Sacramento Kings. Right now, they are projected. To fall back to 33 wins, which is very interesting. Ooh. I mean, some, some so they people have to get books, right. right? Yeah. But I don't know if it's going to be them. Yeah. They're too talented. I feel like they're way too talented. 
Yeah, I don't think so either. When you look at the Phoenix on team, yeah, and they just put them at thirty seven <laughs> wins, yeah. but they got the Kings falling back 33. to thirty three. That, that like that's it's just hard to see. Scratch my head. Yeah, yeah, the Kings were almost in the playoffs. So is Ricky Rubio that impactful? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's Dario. Maybe, Maybe it's Dario. Rubio, that, that impactful, but um, right, yeah, hopefully it's Dario. Uh, I like this team a lot. I, they kept the same team that we seen last year. They gave us mm-hmm. um, that great season. Yeah, minus Willie Colley It was Willie great Stein. because it was surprising. Right. Um, and then they came in and they brought some guys that I think can contribute and, and continue to help. Dwayne Dedman is right? definitely going to help. Dwayne Dedman yeah. is going to stretch the floor for Marvin Bagley and the mm-hmm. rest of that team. Trevor Reza is mm-hmm. an experienced wing guy. And that's the type of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Corey Joseph. <laughs> that, they they pay Corey yeah, Joseph a, like crazy for yeah. a backup. I think he's making like thirteen million a year as a backup. And then, that is crazy. I mean, he's a very he's a good backup though. But thirteen yeah. mil. I don't know if he's worth that, but Hell, for a team, I would have let him get a one year with the Suns. <laughs> I mean, this is it. We need such a mm-hmm. wing of power. Go get him for twenty yeah. million. I think this team just builds off what they did last year for the most part. They had, they put it together last season. I think it just kind of fell apart after the All Star break. It looked like they just kind of ran out of gas. Uh huh. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. I think what did they finish like ninth? Yeah. Yeah, they were close. They were uh, they they finished ninth, but they weren't their very record, close. Yeah, their you record I mean? after the break was way under five hundred. Um, but yeah, they did. They definitely seemed like they ran out of steam. Mm-hmm. They made the trade for Harrison Barnes to go in, and then the second half of the season um, after that, they kind they just struggled. They ended the season with three straight losses. They lost, uh, which is kind of normal with like young seven teams. To 10. Yeah. Young teams go through that. They're gonna go through droughts where they just. Lose games where they go on winning streaks. Yeah. It happens all the time. And they, they went on a, a couple very nice win streaks where they were beating good teams. And you're like, oh, man. They were always one of the more exciting teams last year. No matter what, you knew that De'Aaron Fox was going to be fun with his amazing speed. Buddy Hill's elite three-point shooting. Bogdanovich hit a game win on us last year. Was, he sure did. Was, <laughs> he sure did. Lonzo hooped his ass. And then Bogdanovich went to Phoebe and was just like, Jesus. So who knows? <laughs> he may come back and just be their starting small forward and just kill stuff. So... I really like this team. I really like this team. I don't know if they're making the playoffs because of how competitive the West is, but I know they're going to be fun. They're still super young. De'Aaron Fox is going into year number three. Right. Marvin Backlund is going into year number two in a year that he can finally start. At least I would. I pray that they finally get that man <laughs> started minutes. Um, and then Buddy Hill, maybe oh, thirty years old. Marvin Bagley. Marvin Bagley. Yeah. 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 I think that's my that's my biggest question mark for the team is how they're going to use him. I think that's just because he he has the frame. Right. To run center. He likes working inside. That's why I think having Dwayne Dedman, he could be kind of a mix. Because he could play inside, but he doesn't always have to be technically the five. So I got these advanced stats. And I, we're not advanced stats people, but it's cool to look at. You got to take mm-hmm. that with the art eye test, right? He played a total of 10% of his minutes at center, and the team got blown out by 12 <laughs> points. Um, that was the point differential when he was running center. They could not score the ball, and defensively, they couldn't stand in front of anybody. They were the bottom 5% in the yeah. league when he was at center. I mean, as an NBA player, too, I hope he just... Kind of grows more into an uh, NBA type body, especially as a big. Just his frame should be getting bigger. He mm-hmm. should be getting a little bit more, just like knowing positioning where to be. Well, there's two positions in the NBA where, like, when you come in, you're going to struggle. It's the point guard position and then the center position. And then that's when you know you got somebody special that comes in as a point guard, like Trey Young came in as a point guard and played great. Mm-hmm. Or DeAndre Ayton came mm-hmm. in as a center and played great. Those are the two hardest positions to transition. So a guy that normally played power forward in college coming in and fighting with the biggest of the big boys is going to be a struggle. Mm-hmm. But um, hopefully you expect him to put on more muscle to be more ready to fight those bigger guys. Mm-hmm. I hope they can run him at center because I think his career projects as a, like a stretch center. Yeah. And it just works well. They got Luke Walton as their coach now, and he's more of a development developmental coach. So if that can work in their favor, I mean, that, I that's going about, for yeah. them. I forgot about the coaching change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I look at Marvin Bagley, and I see Chris Bosh-ish. So I would like for him to, to be that center, uh, that make that transition from when Chris Bosh went from powerful with the Raptors to center with the Heat. Mm-hmm. If he can be like that, I think this team can be real dangerous. And especially the way the NBA is going, nobody is really playing a 6'11 power forward. Right. Um, unless he's just Ryan Anderson. It's super super versatile, yeah, who can just do um, both. Yeah, but, I mean, the, the, the duo between him and Fox and that you have Buddy Hill on the wing, uh, I like Harrison Barnes. Um, Harry Giles. I want to see some things from Harry yep. Giles. Mm-hmm. Uh, they think- have a log jam of bigs now. They signed who? They signed Dwayne Demi. Who else did they sign? Oh, that's a big man. Rashawn Holmes. Rashawn Holmes. Yep. They have a log jam at big man. They gonna have to figure that out because they do believe in Harry they Giles. Got Lisa, who plays for? Uh, they got Caleb Swanigan from Portland. 
Mm. So yeah. yeah, he's on the roster. I'm um, trying to see by the end of the year who's going to be the fastest team. Because it's a as lot far of, as pace goes. Yeah, yeah. I think be I got an idea. Up, there's going to be a team up top with De'Aaron Fox at they at they PG spot. I think it's going to be the uh, the Pelicans. Yeah, I think it's going because they were they were that two years ago yeah. without Lonzo, without you know yeah. Zion running the break. That's what uh, with Drew Holiday and them, who not even like he's not really that fast of a player, but now they got fast players. But the Kings will definitely be up there too. Um, Buddy Hield, man, Buddy Hield surprised me a bunch. I'm so happy that he figured things out mm-hmm. because it wasn't really working out his rookie season. Um, and then he was a part of the boogie tray, right? He's a part of the boogie tray. He gets a brand new start. His first year, he didn't shoot the ball. Ooh, no, I take that back. Shit. His first year in Sacramento, he shot 48% from the field. But last year, he's one of the best three point shooters in the league yeah. on a last high year, volume it seemed, and. It seemed like he just put it wise. together, like scoring wise. We always knew he could score the ball, but he put it in at this like NBA level. Like mm-hmm. we knew he was a threat. He averaged yeah. 20. Yeah. Started every game. Mm-hmm. You know, he played, he, he's been an Iron Man for his career, which is right. great. Um, play 82, 80, 82 games, which is, which is just amazing. And he shoots the ball crazy. I just think he's with a team that, that he fits. Mm-hmm. You got De- De'Aaron Fox always going downhill. Um, now you have uh, Bagley. <clears throat> you have other shooters around like Bondanovic. So, you know, as long as they continue to play that, that brand of basketball, I think they have a good mix. They have attacking guys. Mm-hmm. They have guys that are going to play inside. They got guys that play out. I think that's just a good recipe to have whenever you can mix it up. They got some size. They got some length. De'Aaron Fox is a bigger point guard. Uh, their pace is going to be good with Luke Walton being there. Um, it's just about developing these guys, uh, keeping up that momentum that they had last year. I think that's going to be big for this team because you don't want to see a team – Take a step back after mm-hmm. he had such a surprising year because that can be a locker room deflator. Which is which is my scary thing. Like I, I try to bring out the positive and negatives. That's one thing that scares me. What if that was just a one year fluke? Yeah, then that, it's it, a possibility, right? Then this yeah. team that we looked at with so much so much potential will probably start getting split up in some way. Unfortunately, that's usually what happens. Guys come in they're on a high horse. There's so much potential. Everybody's ready to play. Look what we did last year. Then they take a step back. Now the front office is unsure. Guys didn't have that same type of gear. Do we know Buddy Hill is really one of those type of guys? Is De'Aaron Fox really? You I think know? Buddy Hill's got to get paid this season, right? He's, yeah, uh, he's a, he's making four point eight million dollars, and I think <laughs> I think this on the last year of his deal. Yeah, they love him that he's deal right ninth. now because they're gonna have to pay him. Yeah, um, the Kings fans deserve it, man. They deserve something. It's been a minute since they've been good, um, and they won a playoff berth, and I respect that. King's Twitter. It just might not come this year. It, it might not come this year. It's just so much going on in the Western yeah. Conference. It seems like this, these younger teams that are close may not get there. Kind of sad for them. Well, them great got, for the NBA, Some though. of them got to be close, though, or at least may, maybe even make it. Now, let's know. talk about this team. Okay. Can I get a drum roll, please? There. The Golden State Warriors. <laughs> They're one of the most polarizing teams because some people don't have them in the playoffs, and then some people are like, hey, man, of course they're still going right. to be good. That's just that's just crazy. I know, but you got to think about how many teams. There's like 11 teams mm. competing for that playoff spot. Yeah, Somebody's probably dropping out because the Lakers are coming in. So people are thinking that, oh, there's no KD. There's no Klay Thompson for half a season. So the Warriors are the team. But you got Steph and Draymond, yeah, and it's hard do. for me. And D'Angelo Russell, Russell now. You got three All Stars on that roster. Why would you? Why would they be the team to fall completely off mm-hmm. the face of the earth? And I think the pieces that they got, <laughs> I feel like they're just gonna make them work. Yeah, I don't know why, but I, and the Warriors bring the best. Who jumps just like, me. <laughs> it's like <laughs> fundamentals. Funny. You screen, you cut, you move, yeah. like you pass. Like it's not I'll, a hard system to implement yourself. I don't know. Into. According to Kevin Durant, that system sucks. I love the. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that was weird. That's because he um, a ball dominant player. <laughs> not even though. That's like he can play. He can play without the. He played without. He the literally ball. could play anywhere. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, he I, I don't think he was worried about that. Especially, especially Chicago. He just wanted some shit to Kevin. say. Um, but I like Willie Cauley Stein. I'm always say that I could just picture him and Draymond doing the lives. Still got Kevon Looney. Uh, mm-hmm. I like Alec Burks. But I think just the core basis of Stefan, Draymond, and D'Angelo Russell, and I think that's the fact that you don't have a Kevin Durant there mm-hmm. anymore that's not, you know. He doesn't take the, the ball. ball he's not they're going to rely more on their, on their ball moon and what they, yeah, what what they, they did they, at first. Their bread and yeah. butter, what they built right. the foundation. Like when, that's Her- when Harrison Barnes was there. Yeah. And, and, yeah, they got their, <laughs> their two. Their, uh, that's your boy, D. <laughs> <laughs> they got their top three guys, and, I mean, after that, they're kind of like just all right role players, mm-hmm. but. And that in that warrior system, a lot of those all right war play, role players turn out somewhat solid just because all you got to really do is knock down your shot. Yeah, I don't like Alonzo McKinney. Mm-hmm. Much to me, but on the Warriors, 
Right. When you have it. I, I remember I seen Jonas Jurek go into the Warriors. I was like, damn, he going to be something for them. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That game right. He literally could just shoot the ball. And it's just like when you, they're already so dangerous shooting, you add more shooting, it's, it's scary. So D'Angelo Russell played 13% of his minutes as shooting guard last mm-hmm. season. And numbers were ridiculous. Not his numbers, but like the team numbers when he was alongside right. um, Spencer Dinwiddie. Right. With Spencer Dinwiddie being the primary ball handler. I, I do like D'Angelo Russell as a two. His playmaking's crazy still, mm-hmm. but I do like him as a two. I, I do like too. him as a one, but you know, with Steph Curry, if Steph no, Curry is yeah. the yeah. one, Steph Curry, then you're good with him at two. Because yeah. Steph Curry moves without the ball, literally, he's the best one in the world to do so. And when you got D'Angelo initiating the <laughs> offense, so? I think he is one of the best. Who's who's number two? No, 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 no. He said he thinks he's one of the best. He, he's is, one of the is best. Is he the best or is he not the best? Because he said he's he one of the best. Okay. I wouldn't want to draw him off the ball. He think you said the best. Neither on ball. Like, yeah. He's number two. Yeah. Wait, right. who's the I best mean, at moving without the ball? JJ Reddick. Oh, oh JJ Reddick. JJ Reddick coming Ray off screens is the nasty. Oh, I was thinking like current players. Oh, but Ray right. I mean, those are the type of players, but when you have somebody as versatile that like Steph who could have the ball and he shoot from 40 feet out, and also you got to watch him off the ball, DeAndre Russell can have a lot of stuff to work with. I remember seeing a stat a while ago. I'm gonna see if I can pull it up. Of like miles traveled, which yeah. means like you're running. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Wasn't Zach Levine the like Zach the top Levine guy? was top five? I think JJ Reddick was was you used was to hear Zach one. Levine top five and whatever. Zach Levine was four. <laughs> JJ didn't play enough minutes this year. Interesting. But JJ's one of those guys that you know he's boom yeah. boom 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 boom. Like mm-hmm. people always say, who's the worst player to guard? Boom, 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 boom. And JJ's one of those guys. Boom 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 boom. boom. <laughs> Boom, boom. No, but I have, <laughs> whatever playoff seed they they come up to be, I have be as an immediate threat. Yeah, You're gonna be scared? especially with Clay Thompson. But I think he's gonna come back better somehow. That's what he said. I yeah. think he's coming back. Isn't better. it hard? I mean, yes, you like the confidence. Yeah. But ain't it hard to come back better? It does. Well, because like they have so much time to focus on their body. Jabari Parker yeah. came back better after the first one. He got more weight. I don't know how, yeah. but he got way more. I Clay think, Thompson I think was Russell just been Westbrook's... an Iron Man before that, too. Like, Clay Thompson barely missed any Oh, game. you say it's Clay, uh, his is better because Durant left? No, no. Uh, I was thinking that Russell Westbrook's better is because he got smarter with the way he fin- like came down. Yeah, I seen uh, that. Like, you, like the way- better? No, you, mm. After the first one, yeah, he had found his balance. He it's a whole he, breakdown on it. He was talking about like he. Oh, as far as the way he came back down, like right. just how he, they, he changed the way he ran. He, no, no, oh, is that Russell Westbrook? He I'm was thinking saying of. how like he that that was Russell Westbrook. I he think changed, changed the way he ran. Yeah, I okay. think because he stopped relying on athleticism. There all the was time. a thing on Derrick Rose after the very first one. The only thing mm. about Derrick Rose is that it happened. So Somebody wrote time. a thesis paper about this, right? But, um, no, it's like a video. It's like okay. a, a docu series. Um, and it was in him showing him training. He was saying like he had no balance. Mm-hmm. Like the injury, like he was talking about the blessings and then like the good about the the injury instead of everything that's so negative is that he's able to you know find his balance, work on his core, get his lower half even more stronger. It was just different things he didn't right. he never worked on. It. it was just natural. But now that he's honing it, because think about Derrick Rose, how he played before his first. That's what I'm saying. MVP, he had no balance. That that sounds crazy. But then he's saying that now, sounds. Absurd now I'm yeah, thinking about no, it No but you think It was because He was kind of like Driving to the hole All wild and everything He just coming down I mean something just contact. so naturally good At you Right Because really I think about How Clay Thompson came down I don't think he always Just lands like that It was a hard contact With Danny Green And he had came down To his leg wrong My real question Okay so The thing that Derrick Rose Used to do I guess he still does it Where he rearranges his shot So it doesn't get blocked Yeah, yeah. If that was a badge 2K wise What would that be Acrobat Yeah Okay so, so Rayvon had acrobat. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, here are some names on here that I'm interested to see. Glenn Robinson III. I ain't seen him in a minute. Interested to see how that is. And I don't mean like he hasn't played. I literally just don't remember him I just said on his the name court. Too. I think Amari Spellman. Amari gonna put, Spellman. Amari Spellman going to put something together with this Warriors like, team. I literally think he could be most base 2.0. Interested to see how that is. Uh, Jordan Poole, the rookie out of Michigan. He had yeah. a nice summer league. Um, Eric Pat- Y'all saw he Eric, shot his shot as Zendaya? No, he did. He shot a shot at Zendaya. What did he say? So Clay Thompson is dating some model who's yeah. friends with Zendaya. Mm-hmm. And Zendaya commented under Clay Thompson's picture, like, oh, sweet, or something like that. And Jordan Poole was like, want a double date? Or something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. He shot a shot. She didn't respond, but maybe she DM'd. You never really know. He got to keep things private. Shout out to Jordan Poole. Devin Marble was a, was a part of a nice uh, draft class. With the Magic when they brought in, he was their all-time leader score at Iowa. Iowa, um, <laughs> come on, man! He beat his dad's record. Uh, who else was a part of that? See, I it remember was... just the stupid stuff that don't. Kylo, no, that ain't stupid. That's a, that's, 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 that's gotta be a proud moment shit. as a dad if your son beat your <laughs> that record. You beat your record. Yeah, right. That's, that's a proud moment as a dad. I say, and people be like, "Oh, why are you picking on D. Mills?" Like, if I be like, 
Yeah, D'Angelo Russell. D, D man's like, yeah, I fuck with D'Angelo Russell. What college you go to? <laughs> but you do that too often. Like, yeah. we, you know, me and Mike was watching a football game or something. He was like, man, there ain't three players on the Texans. Because, yeah. you know what? because Mike always, Mike always talk about some shit. I'd be like, name this then, Mike. Man, I know. Uh, Mike, Mike named him that. I remember that. Mike did name him. He's uh, like Mariota. Uh, oh, yeah. The Titan. Oh, yeah. I don't remember the, his name. The Titans oh, of yeah. Texas. Um, but yeah, that's just how I knew my shit. Mm-hmm. Because my that's, you know how my dad is. We'd be in a car driving somewhere. It'd be like, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, I like him. What college you go to? <laughs> that's how. Yo, that's how we I got knew he was about to tell the story. That's how we got the classic moment. <laughs> What's the classic moment, KB? Um, so, so Pierre has his brother. Shout out to uh, to Junior, the bug. And we, I don't know, we were just talking about basketball. And he said something about J.J. Reddick. <laughs> and Pierre's dad was like, J.J. Reddick, black or white? <laughs> but I was like, black? <laughs> <laughs> you got to make sure people know what they talk about. <laughs> but guess what? He, he know JJ. He knew JJ. He Reddy knew JJ Reddy because we all all our reaction was what the fuck? <laughs> like just that name tells you he's not black. JJ Reddick. Are you serious? But he yeah. From that moment on, he knew JJ Reddick was. Yeah, you'll never forget. Never forget. You'll never forget. <sighs> and are we to our last team? Or do you have anything else to say about the Warriors? Um, how good do you think this team can be? Because what's their win pro- projection? Oh, I didn't even tell you, tell y'all that. Their win projection is fifty one games, so they're still projected. Okay, the so that's, they got yeah. them a high state. Yeah, that's a six. That's a six drop from six. They won yeah. fifty seven last uh-huh. year, mm-hmm. um, which is makes sense. Steph Curry, Steph Curry's about to come out and and just shut MVP, these boys up. MVP type season. I'm I think predicting. so. I think, so. I, think, yeah. I, 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 think so I think to add on to this free agency that we had, we need shit like that. We need like a revenge season from him. Mm-hmm. We need LeBron to come back. Uh, it'd be on his shit. We need Draymond to have a chip on his shoulder about how disrespect, disrespect that he and the Warriors have been. Uh, you know he's ready to prove the world that they can win without Kevin Durant. Uh, Kyrie Irving needs to have that bounce back season. Kemba Walker needs to show that he's elite in that level with Kyrie, Dame, and them. Trying to bounce back Russell Westbrook. Uh, yeah, Russell Westbrook. So we have we have the storylines of all these guys mm-hmm. moving, and we got the rookies and Zion and Ja. And then now we can also add a dynamic of players coming back and showing it's my shit. Before we get to the very last team, the Lakers, I just noticed you you changed your hair color. Oh, I literally just I noticed that it. right now. It did, is. What did he call it? Wait, don't say. Because he, he said it in like the I game do, What did he yeah. say? <laughs> like this is a honey bun, a honey. He did say honey <laughs> bun. <laughs> I didn't say no honey What'd bun. What'd you say? Honey Cinnamon I said honey pros- blonde. Honey blonde. Oh, I, I swear to God, honey I heard honey blonde. blonde. That's why I heard honey Because y'all were talking bun. about the color like it was some weird color. But I was like... Huh. Honey bun is what I heard. Yeah, too. okay. And I was like, that's just a weird description. Is that for Lakers? This is... Yeah, we could put it for that. Okay. Because that thing had purple. Yeah. just like... Didn't you say you said that you, you would have dyed your hair purple and gold? No, I said if they would have signed Kawhi, I would have dyed my hair purple and or uh, yeah, purple and gold. Doc Rivers said if they signed Kawhi, we got to move this team to Seattle. That's what he said. I ain't hear that one. Yeah, Google it. You think I'm lying? I got sources. I'm Chris Boucher. I got multiple sources. Well, there's kind of like skeletons in the Clippers closet <laughs> with all the stuff that they've been through. Somebody called to Seattle. Yeah, they was calling them black folk out there. <laughs> 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 Did y'all watch that or listen to the whole documentary? No, nah, it's about it's thir- thirty for thirty with Ramona Shelburne. It's a podcast. It talks about the whole Sterling saga, of what really yeah. happened. Because I never knew the details of it. I just knew that he was a yeah. racist ass. I heard just it was they got like that recording of that the voice message. Or yeah, it go. It, it's yeah. kind of insane the stuff that he yeah. said. You're like, oh, that's how people just living nowadays. Like Khalifa said, mm-hmm. many souls ain't with you. Like because the, yeah, the let me, I'm, I'm gonna just say right now, it's because his mistress took a picture of Magic Johnson that he went on yeah. that race to Tyra. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. With Magic Johnson, and, and his yeah. ass is like, you took a picture with him. And we, he, he didn't even say he didn't even say the word. He, just, he said minorities. <laughs> you took, you she, can't be taking. She was a minority, right? Exactly. Yeah. Like, that's the crazy. <laughs> I had to Google her. Like, what she look like? She a damn minority too. It's just anyway. We're gonna take a next break before we get to the Lakers talk. And last, and certainly not least, we got the Lakers, man. Big offseason for them. Big offseason. Traded their current and their future for now. Right? Their current because no, they have now, we have now and a little bit of future. With What's AD? that look? 18. Oh, he's yeah. Still he's 26. So, yeah, that is some future. But he's still yeah, he going to need some players to play around, right? He can still leave. He could still leave. What? <laughs> <laughs> that, y'all? That's the biggest yeah, finesse move. Him off. And he said he... 
it, returning home is not, is not out the window. It's, it's, out, the, it's out the yeah. window. Let's be real. <laughs> He's not coming to Chicago. I think he more focused on this year first before he think about anything else. What if we did a sign to trade with him coming to Chicago? When y'all got Zach, the Bulls got, I mean, Lakers got Zach. Hell Zach, no. Lauren, yeah. Lauren, I would want to be Hell no. What y'all giving up? We give y'all... Uh, uh, Sadaransky, <laughs> no. Chris no, and Felicio. You better accept that and, and just call what's it a day. Where's the wins for them? Uh, their projected wins is 47. 47. Damn. That seemed yeah, a lot giving them I had them around like 53 wins. Yeah. I, yeah. I like that's them. definitely over like 50 that. wins. You said you said definitely? Yeah, well, yeah, AD yeah, and LeBron, that's definitely 50 wins. I don't you would know, hope man. So. You would hope so. Yeah, you would hope so, but... They're not a very deep team. They're I, not. I, I, I like but their top, they're, but their top is just so heavy that yeah. they can get them through, through wins. We got that top heavy. <laughs> <laughs> what scares uh, me is that what, what's the start lineup looking like in y'all eyes? Because I've heard different versions mm-hmm. of the start lineup. I'm gonna go with Rajon Rondo. Okay. Danny Green. Yep. LeBron James. Uh huh. Kyle Kuzma. Anthony Davis. See that's the thing, but he don't want to start it. Yeah. yeah. So and, and I don't and I don't know if I like mm-hmm. Rondo and LeBron. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. That's what I'm I, I, like I think I would rather have like Quinn Cook. Yeah, but, I think you can start Quinn Cook. He asks us what yeah. do we think, not right. what, we, what, what we would do. Right. Yeah, right. Two different things. So I think I would no, take I think a lineup. I'm taking Rondo. Out that's not my lineup. Quick. That's not my lineup. That's not my lineup. He asks what do we think they would do. Okay. What I would do is have LeBron be point guard. I'll probably put like. Beverly and um, Beverly, Beverly, who's Beverly? Bradley? I mean, yeah, Avery Bradley. Oh, Avery Bradley. <laughs> um, Avery Bradley. Yeah, I thought. <laughs> you know, damn it, what was like Bradley. combining. No, Bradley. I mean, you could do that. Yeah, yeah, you could definitely put like Avery Bradley, Danny Green, LeBron. All I know is that I want Kyle Kuzma, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis star. I'm, I'm more on the fan side of having Kyle Kuzma come off the bench. Mm, I think having, me too. Mm. I think that's having yeah. that, him as a spark plug off the bench, and you could put him at different positions, kind mm-hmm. of mix him up with who's out there on the floor. Yeah, because you put him in that solid. starting lineup, then their bench doesn't really have much scoring. Right. But I, you know what they do? You take LeBron and AD out. He now has the control of the second unit. By the time he's tired, you put an AD back in. Yeah, you, you can know, rotate like that. Because who? Is, there's not really a lot of people that's giving you that punch in the mouth off the bench, really. It's like Lou Will. Yeah. And then, yeah. But he can be next. You know, he can be he can be the, the big. He Lou definitely Will. has a skill to do it. Yes. Yeah. What scares me most about them if they start Kyle Kuzma is that he's going to take the small forward defending position because LeBron is not mm-hmm. going to be guarding like, I don't the other guy's best player, and yeah. I don't trust him defensively. Yeah, LeBron not and Kuz, close. Yeah, that forward position is going to be weak defensively. Yeah, so that's why I would have him come off the bench. Kuzma mm-hmm. like a Tobias Harris. You just like him at that four. He can play three, but you would prefer him at that four. Yeah, and then last year they played, <laughs> played him at five at the end of the season. Right. Yeah. I think I think the lineup <laughs> I would go with is definitely. Quinn Cook, Danny Green, LeBron, AD, JaVale. And you saying Quinn Cook for the shooting? Yeah, all he is is space to score because you have LeBron James out there. Right. I don't think he really need to have much like ball handling responsibilities. But what I do like is that they actually had a formula going into this offseason. Instead of last year, they was just signing players right. that didn't That's a, I think we addressed a lot of the things that went wrong last season. I mean, yeah. well, Magic Johnson last year said they were making a defensive team. <laughs> and right. they ended up being one of the worst defensive teams. <laughs> we like that bad defensive team. We look at the roster top bottom, they have shit. They have, you know, Jerry Daly. Mm-hmm. Tra- they don't have, like, they, these ain't no, but they have, in the face, but they gonna work with LeBron, right. Kuzma. I mean, mm-hmm. LeBron and AD. Um, Troy Daniels. Troy Daniels should shoot the hell out of the ball. Mm-hmm. That's the type of signings they should have got last year. Right. I'm gonna look at his numbers. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, I think, yeah, because like I, I said, know he's I think a great shooter. Our problems, if, we, if I had a, you know, make a little list of what I think went wrong, it was definitely we struggled to shoot the ball. We shot like we were 29th at three point shooting. Free throw, for, uh, free throw. We were almost dead last. That's your fault. LeBron, <laughs> LeBron too. Yeah. Shot his worst free throw last year. As, as a guard, Lonzo cannot be shooting nowhere near what he shot. I'm not even gonna say what he shot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, we, that, that was brother it, can ball. Was it 47 percent or something? Like that? <laughs> I don't know, but I look at the roster again, and I think we could still struggle this year with our free throw, free throw shooting. Yeah, it just probably won't be as bad. But no. I don't. Tr- who do you trust I with seconds left trust? to go to the free throw line to put the game away? You want to put Davis. the trust in LeBron? KCP, 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 AD. Anthony Davis can shoot the ball at the free throw line very good. Mm-hmm. Go on, Anthony Davis. Also, quick update: Lakers received a one point side, one point seven million exception. dollar disabled player exception for Boogie's uh, season ending. And, and we heard that me and Mike said the same name: J.R. Smith, Iman Shumper, Iman Shumper, J.R. Smith. Cause we 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 have an idea that Iman so Shumper has another, he had another game there. one moment. Yeah, like J.R. Smith turned down. Yeah, J.R. Smith. 
Huh? We don't need another game one moment from J.R. Smith. Not the finals. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't mind it because they wasn't going to win the MCs anyway. <laughs> did y'all ever see that? Did y'all ever see that? What? The, the reporter asked JR about this. He's like, oh, and we won the game. Who's going? <laughs> he was like, y'all was going to win the MCs. He said, he said, this is what I'm talking about. This is like the season. No, that game one definitely could have messed something. No, it would have been. It definitely would have messed something. I don't think they would have won. But we got one of the best NBA memes ever. When LeBron was, yeah. That's when it, that will always go down as a classic. Or the one right after that, when he's on the bench, and you see yeah. like his whole energy is just gone. He's just on the bench like yeah, that. Yeah, my energy would have been gone too. Yeah, facts. I just facts. dropped fifty, and you just chucked the ball. You didn't even use. You didn't do anything. MJ wouldn't have that because that brother could ball. <laughs> MJ would have said, "Okay, I, I want this challenge." Kobe, those type of brothers feel for that. That. Um, I can't even think of the word. What is it called? Adversity. <laughs> that put in ball. So, you remember I mentioned <laughs> earlier in the episode that I had a question between the Lakers and Clippers. Which one do y'all trust more to win the West? To win the West? Uh, yeah. Give me the Los Angeles Lakers, man. I'll go with the Clippers just because they're a deeper team. I will go Clippers I'm as well. Clippers too. And defensively, I'm going to go Clippers. <laughs> just like that. I'm just, I'm just talking shit. I'm going to go Clippers, though. My boy and defensively, the Clippers got the answers. That's why I said Clippers. Mm-hmm. And then if one of them goes down, they still have a host that they can, you know, they can fill Yeah, they can put them in. You still go Lakers though? Is of that course. is that fandom or is that? It, I think so. For the Clippers and the Lakers, I look at the. I think they're the same thing almost. Just bear with me here. No, I'm listening. I'm I think they all interrupt. Both you. teams have all the tools to be championship in terms of stars, the role we players, the coaching, everything. Come on, get to it. Coaching. But, he about to say something. Uh-oh. Hey, coaching. Frank Vogel. Frank, Frank Vogel, Vogel has the two good playoff runs. Doc Rivers. Yeah, that's said Both of the teams have. Yeah, but Doc Rivers. One of them is a great one. Yeah, is good. One's a Hall okay. of Fame one. Uh, both have all right coach. One has a, a very good coach. One has an all right coach. Okay, but I just coach, look at the Lakers. Like I just look at the Lakers and say they all have the ingredients. It's just kind of they just threw them in there. The the Clippers are more of the they're just more put together, and I think That's they're already. I think so. My God, they're already ready. But the yeah. Lakers, if if I had to pick somebody to put all of it together and be my chef for that, I'm picking LeBron James. LeBron James. So that's, that's a good answer, but I, I do like the fact that more, majority of this Clippers team was there last year, and you're adding mm-hmm. Kawhi, you're adding Paul George, and you're right. adding a couple of but Landry Shaman, Lou Bill, Pat mm-hmm. Beverly, Zubac, Montrez Harrell. That that core team is still intact. In besides what Gallinari, yeah, Jermichael Green is even back. Shit like that, and I, I like Doc Rivers. He's used to having this type of mm-hmm. <clears throat> not that he's used to, it, but he's had this. He had it with the. Uh, I'm so glad he didn't retire. Remember, he almost retired like two years ago. He, yeah. was, he was like golfing right before the season started. Oh, yeah, it was, was a big thing. Like, was he about to retire? Mm-hmm. Look uh, at him now. But he had the big three with Boston, CP3, Blake Griffin, uh, yeah, Lob City, cool. and now he has this. So he has that experience of these these mega teams. Yeah. Frank Vogel is a question mark. I do agree with you. Frank Vogel isn't some lollygag. No, if anything, I would hope defensively he could, you know, have it so like a top five. Defense. He going to have y'all start Avery Bradley at the one for his defense. Did y'all, hear what Doc work, Rivers says? It. Did y'all hear what Doc Rivers says at every practice? I mean, at the beginning of the season? No. He says, like, I'm Doc Rivers, I'm your coach, and I will make mistakes. Oh, that's but, cute. But, like, but he said everything I do is to try to win. Yeah. I respect no, that. I respect that one, name. <laughs> one name. One name. On that Lakers staff. It's going to have Kyle Kuzma in his bag a little bit more. It's fair handy. Kyle Kuzma's gonna do some no, shit. I think I think I see you post this. I got I got I think there's a lot of bright spots for this league. And also all you Raptors fans that was crying all season last year when we was making these podcasts and all of us were saying we don't think Kawhi's gonna come back. Nah. He's gone. Why are you taking shots at them? This not even an episode. <laughs> you know why? Because I went Instagram live yesterday and, and and a couple of them was like, Y'all talked about the Raptor for five minutes. No. Oh, well some teams just get that. Exactly. Y'all win a championship, be happy. <laughs> Th- that motherfuckers don't. They want everything. They still want to you know, so I've never had problems with Raptors fans. I have problems with Lakers fans, Thunder's fans. Warrior fans used to be annoying, but now the Raptors fans are taking the cake. I, I do like some Raptors Bulls fans. Bulls fans are annoying as fuck, too. a spicy P account on I Twitter. Agree. I love him. Uh, Sinister is a Raptors fan. I love him. Um, Who's the first person he said? He said it's a Raptors It's a spicy account. P guy. Spicy P. Spicy Siakam? Yeah. That's a girl. How you know what I'm talking about? It's like five of them. I, the one I'm thinking about, her name is Spicy. What's the profile Siakam. picture? I don't know. I don't know if I've ever clicked on a profile. I just know it's a girl. I mean, you see a profile picture when you tweet. Ooh. I know your shit is you taking like a picture. I have no idea. I've never paid attention. Um, so even if it is that girl one, love her. 
Um, my boy, is it Coverson or Car? He has Kyle Lowry as his pitcher. Love him. So there are some people, but then it's it's the, it's the few. The whole fan base, of course, mm-hmm. is not diluted, but it's those one one through five that just be complaining about a lot of shit. If my team just won a championship, I don't give a damn how. Long but I nobody was worse than Lakers fans. I say that right here, right now. None Damn, in, in front of a Laker fan? Oh, I forgot Knicks fans exist. Yeah, no, Knicks fans is crazy. So my, my top yeah. five... Knicks fans uh, piss me off and I'm a Knicks fan. No, my top five of fan bases that, that are my mentions that make me mad. Knicks are up there. Lakers. Thunder. But I doubt Thunder. They, they they're were dead. Yeah, yeah, they're dead. They have nothing now. Um, Bulls and Celtics. Just like the biggest markets, and then OKC. Is, yeah, but is your, your own team, when you do a job like this, your own team, is fans are going to annoy you because they think you have to always, like, kiss their ass or be biased to them. I've said shit and be like, aren't you a Knicks fan? Yeah, my fucker, but I'm not about to be stupid because I'm a Knicks fan. You came up here and did a whole, like, segment where you just talked about all the bullshit the Knicks have yeah, done over the years. Yeah, like, this job doesn't require me to kiss the Knicks. Not everything going to be good life. with you. It's yeah. literally impossible for you to have no wrong steps in your work. Impossible. Impossible. Unless you're the Warriors for the last it's three impossible. years. impossible. Eh. Who's who made this up? I don't remember. Who made this up? I don't know. I don't want to hear that, boy. I want to hear that. If it, that's Kanye. Man. Kanye in that twist. <laughs> Um, last couple news, IT. That's your boy. What happened? Isaiah Thompson's my boy. You know what's very confusing? So they tweeted that, right? Woj or whoever tweeted said he's going to have surgery. He went to Instagram Live. He showed his hand. He was like, ain't nothing here. He was lying to us. He actually did have a surgery on his hand. And I'm like, there's no scars. There's no bandages. If you just had the surgery today. But he, he tweeted that he was playing defense when he hurt his hand. So he's never yeah. doing that again. It's like, you don't do that in the first place. Yeah, why is he yeah. doing that in like when he's not playing in the MV? He probably he's trying to win that he was trying to win that starting spot over Ish Smith, honestly, probably. Cephalosha. Oh, it's gonna be tough Rogers. over Ish Smith. He, good pickup. Yeah. Does that make them content? I'm just sure. Air Max Bones, <laughs> baby. Uh that was crazy. Magic Johnson talking about Kevin Durant. KD responds saying horrible take. That's just re- 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 regurgitated bullshit. My bad. It took me a little. And he deleted that tweet. Then he deleted it. It was Magic Johnson saying KD is one of the best scores he's ever seen in history. But he hoped he's finding happiness because he thought that wasn't going to stay, which I kind of agree with KD. You know, it's great. Certain shit everybody don't see. You know what's so crazy? <laughs> like, uh, this is not just with the older players, but it's just like, in general, people always believe that their values should be lined up with somebody else that was in a similar position. Mm-hmm. Like, the older guys are like, man, I will never switch teams because back in my d- Values evolve. Like, the, the players think differently now than they did back then. Same thing with, like, our parents. Our, we think way differently than our parents do. I think the crazy thing about this Kevin Durant shit is everybody was mad that he went and he left, and now they mad he left. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's like, oh, why he leave? I thought it was about, wasn't we all, I, I wanted yeah, everybody, to leave. Yeah, everybody knew he was leaving too. Like, it wasn't even no yeah. surprise. It was like the Kawhi thing. We kind of both knew both of them was going to leave. Um, top 10 power forwards of all time. Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan. He's not on this list. Okay, what? Then I'm not then listening. Because, yeah. because they go off what we do. It says right here, <clears throat> the last part is critical for this particular article. Oh, he played Plenty a lot of, of fans center. likely see Tim, oh. Tim Duncan as a power forward, but basketball reference tabs him as a center for okay. 71% of his minutes. So that means um, Carmelo. Yes. Dirk. Yes. Um, Barniani. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Garnett. <laughs> Kevin Garnett. That's Who y'all think is number one? Because a lot of people. No, it's a name that y'all should know. It's a 2K. His card is always good. It's a power forward. It's number one? No, not number okay. one, but just a guy. Dennis Rodman? Me. You won't know Joe. Yeah, yeah, Dennis Rodman. Well, I know he's on Dennis Rodman is number 10. What era are we talking? Train. No, talking he gave me with that 2K. Yeah, he before. said Dennis Rodman. For our parents, one of the Malones? No. He's a white guy. I can shoot it. Number nine. Um, Bob Pettit. Bob Pettit. Bob Pettit. Wow. Uh, guy went to Michigan. Base 11, man. Um, <laughs> guy that went to Michigan. He's ninth. Chris, Chris Webber. Webber. Chris Webber. Uh, Gene Shaw, Minnesota. Y'all so cute. Uh, another guy is Washington Wizard. Washington Bullet. Card is always good. My team. Uh, I Jameson. Know my Antoine team Jameson. No. Uh, oh, that was a good guess. Oh, oh was. West Unsell. No, no. no. I think even better. Dennis. Think Elvin even Hayes. better. Oh, yeah. Evan Hayes is one of those guys that I literally always forget about. Used to coach Rockets. Um, McHale. Yes. Um, then this guy right here, Dolph. Shays? I've never even heard of him. He played for the 76ers, right? Yep. Yeah, I've, I've heard the name. I've um, obviously never seen it because he was in the 60s. And Carl Malone is fourth. Charles Barkley got a name. He's third. That makes sense. Second is what? Somebody we haven't mentioned yet? No. Um, There's two people left. Dirk. And then number one? Carl Malone. KG. Oh. oh. Mm, I like Dirk. 
I do person. too. I like KG too though. Um, yeah, how Katie. many franchise goats are in the NBA right now? I'm just throwing some shit out there. Franchise goat, so LeBron. Yes. The gold of the Stephen Curry. Yes. Okay. Um, Kevin Durant. James yes. Harden. James Harden. Ooh. Ha- Hakeem Olajuwon played for the Rockets. Yeah. So I don't know about James Harden just yet. Y'all got to think deeper. I want y'all to think deeper. All right. You about to make me pull up a tab of NBA teams. Yes. Mm. So current players who are the GOAT of a, t- yes, a certain team. current players. Now all of these it doesn't have to be their no, certain. It doesn't have to be their team. It could be any team, a team or the team that they for. played for. And, and remember, they're not. They may not be superstars right now, mm-hmm. but at one point in time, they were a superstar. Vince Carter. Vince Carter. He's the Raptors GOAT. Uh, Dwayne Wade, but he just retired. He's not an NBA. Okay. Um, so y'all name LeBron, Steph, uh-huh. and Vince. Mm-hmm. Russell Westbrook. No, because okay. you name Kevin Durant. All right. Kevin Durant. Um. Guy just moved. Giannis. No. Giannis might be the best Bucks player of all time. Oh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar played for the Bucks. My fault. Um, Give us hints. Organization. Anthony Davis. Ass. No. Chris. Chris who? Chris Paul. Think about that. Chris Paul. That's okay. the fifth one. Okay. Y'all got Chris Paul now. Mm-hmm. Um, organization ass. He just left his offseason. Organization's ass. He just left his offseason. Buzz. Oh, Kimber. Oh, Kimber. 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 Um. <laughs> It's another one. Uh, He's, he signed his offseason too. Later. Later. Marcus Saul. Marcus Saul, yes. He's one of them. He's not the guy I was alluding to. I think this guy's the last person. Think. You, you, you what know conference? What you, conference? You, you, you always say nice things about this man. He's a big man. Because people be disrespecting him. Come on. Think. Think. Look, Lopez. No. Come oh, on. Man. Think. Think. People, it's in y'all. People disrespecting the big man that I talk about. It's not that they disrespect him, but they kind of, you know, they don't. They, Mike should know. Mike really should know. Dwight. Dwight Howard. Oh, Orlando Magic. Magic. Yeah. <laughs> Good shit, man. Good shit. Mike should know. All right. That's all we got today. Hopefully, you did enjoy this episode.